madness. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh, Can't that's him. gorgeous. Hey guys, Ox here bringing you another video. Today I'm going to be bringing you a video on the T62A and it is another how-to video. I got this tank quite recently and I said to myself I might as well just record the games from the very beginning. So the gameplay you see in the very background is my first three games in it. And the little window you see in the bottom right hand corner is my ammunition loadout, my provisions and my consumables, also my equipment. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone knows this tank. It is the tier 10 Russian medium tank. It is the brother slash cousin to the Object 140. But I find this tank uh, is usually... It's it's kind of thrown under the bus. And what I mean by that is, when people say T-62A or 140, they normally tip pick 140. Now, if this was, you know, a few patches ago or a few updates ago, I would agree with you. But since Wargaming have, you know, changed the meds and changed the way, kind of the meta of the game, uh, I would kind of tilt more towards a T62A nowadays. Uh, the 140, it had its time, but I think that, in my opinion now, I have both. As I said, this is these are like my first games in the T62A. Uh, it's, it's a good tank. The accuracy... Uh, it's fairly accurate. It's it's actually really accurate. Uh, you know, it's just like the Russian other the you know the 140. It's it's a laser, and again, it's the same with with the 140. The penetration numbers are kind of lacking, but nonetheless, it is very very accurate. Now, like the 140, this has a very very strong turret, uh, but these tur this turret I'd say is actually stronger than the 140 turret. Uh, at the moment, it maybe it didn't. In you know, in the past, the 140 turret was better, but I have to say that the T62A turret is probably better in my opinion now. But the hull armor is very, very weak, and compared to the Object 140, you don't get those troll bounces off your side and off the front plate. Uh, also, the Object 140 has six degrees of gun depression, if you didn't know, and the T62A has five degrees. Now that is kind of it's kind of rough uh, because a lot of tanks at tier 10 do have six or more degrees of gun depression, and the T62A only having five is a bit of an issue in some situations. As I said, the turret is very strong, but trying to find places where it can actually go hull down and utilize the turret is pretty tricky. Uh, nevertheless, though, when you do get into a hull down and you are managed, you do manage to like hide your hull, only show your turret. This tank is very, very powerful. Now you can see the equipment there, just uh, going in the background. You can stop for a second and have a look at it yourself. Um, but I, I don't really want to go through it like altogether because you know uh, you, you can see on screen. But. The tank, as I said before, it lacks in penetration, so taking a rammer isn't the greatest idea. Uh, but again, it's up to yourself if you feel that the, you can stand up with the pen numbers, that'd be my guess. But personally, for me, I think having the rammer isn't the greatest idea on this. Uh, I won't go into the other uh, other equipments. You, you can see on screen yourself, but. The T62A is great for damage farming, and like a lot of other meds, in this meta you have to be very very careful of how you play and where you go on the map. So maybe before you take this out for a spin in your garage, uh, just go to a training room for 5 or 10 minutes and just have a look at places on the map where you you normally go and just see, have a look at the gun depression, see can I get the gun down here, can I be effective in this area because playing a lot of tanks and then coming to the T62A the gun depression for me is probably the worst thing about this tank now some people might complain about the penetration, some people might complain about the speed um, but for me it's just the, the gun depression 
it is bearable, but it is something to be aware of. Now, in terms of mobility, this thing isn't as fast as the its brother, the Object 140, but it does fly around the battlefield quite effectively. The top speed, I think, is somewhere around the range of like 52 miles an hour, or kilometers an hour, sorry. And it's not bad, you know. Uh, most TDs and heavies at tier 10 can go maybe tops 40. Besides, you know, your, your Russian heavy tanks, but we won't go there. But the speed isn't that bad on it. Like, it gets around. You don't have to worry about uh, you know, not having speed. And using the speed that it does have, you really need to utilize your positioning on maps. Now, you might have noticed in videos, I do use similar spots, um, not all the time, but I you have to find spots that are comfortable for you, that you know you can do well in. And you'll see this prime example on Black Goldville. Uh, you might not have seen people go to this spot before, you might have, but for me personally, I really enjoy going here. You can also see in this clip that I have a problem with the gun depression. Um, and it's quite obvious, you, you'll see later in the video, but the T-62A is very good at fighting at medium to close quarter combat. It can snipe, but the penetration is kind of lackluster, so you need to have your enemies maybe max 200 meters. Max. Obviously you can take shots from wherever, but for effective, for to effectively farm damage, you'd say 200 at the minimum. You can see that U100 is just very, very hard for me to pen. Even with the heat round there, it's quite hard for me to pen a cheek and he's looking straight at me. So, on Black Goldville, most of the team has gone up. And you can see there, I actually thought I shot the IS-8, but I forgot to press the shoot button. And... I'm just playing this like I would any other medium, pretty much. Um, I was looking for free shots on their heavy tanks, trying to keep people spotted. Now, you can see the turret here is doing wonders for me. We haven't bounced anything yet, but even if people look my way, it's very hard for them to get a shot into me. Um, the reason I don't go into the caves is because I find that if they do push you, the enemy do push you and you're in the corner, it's very, very hard to get away. And as I said before, the the T-62A isn't great at side scraping, and it doesn't have that much armor on its hull. So it's not like the 140 where you could hold the corner by yourself and do kind of a one-man army job. It's not great at doing that. You need kind of room to maneuver. And you can see there the gun depression. I have to come over the ridge twice, a fair bit, to get the gun depression on the IS-4 or the E-4, sorry. And you can still see I'm constantly looking around when I'm reloading because I just need to make sure that no one has free shots in my side and no one has shots into my rear so if I do that I'm doing a pretty good job now you can see I am struggling with the gun depression versus this t uh, the SCB and you can see the team is kind of starting to fall apart a small bit so you can see there the turret does manage to bounce that shot for me and you can see even the STB is struggling to pen my turret and he is very very close with those heat rounds. Now there is a prime example of the gun depression problem. I presumed that I could get the gun down to that guy and I couldn't so I took a big hit from him. But nevertheless we do take out the STB and we do survive. So again I'm just looking around seeing where I can go without pushing the boundaries and get shot for free. I don't have that much hit points left at this point, so I'm just playing it safe. Now, again, if this was 140, you'd be a lot more, uh, say, cocky to like poke out with your hull and try and bounce the 100. But when I'm using the T62A, I just don't have the armor on my hull to do that. So I let them come round to me, just like that E4, and I'm always going to get the Chelem before he even comes around the corner, no doubt. Another thing you have to know about the T-62A is the DPM is very, very good. Now you can see I'm down to a 5.2 second reload. Obviously, I have the perk of having so little hit points, I get the quicker reload. But, 
you know, it's this and the uh, Object 140 have the quickest reloads out of the medium tanks, as you probably already know. So you need to really utilize that and just, when you have the shots, just put the gun to good use. Just keep that fire button going all day. You see, I pop the adrenaline here and just, just, just let the gun do work. Obviously, you want to stay behind the Death Star. And you can see the mobility here, the Death Star, you can't do much at that point. Obviously, always go for track shots as well, that's another little tip. Always go for track shots and TDs when you're sitting behind them. You can see there was a nice enough game there, we did 3.6k damage. You will now see, going into the next game, th this tank is basically uh, built for dogfighting. And it's the same with the Object 140, you know, you want to get in people's faces and you want to circle them, you want to bully them, face hug them, side hug them and just let the DPM chunk away the enemy. Now, obviously you need to spot for the team. Um, that's my main course, pretty much every tank I play, I want to get early spots and I want to get some early damage. Now, you can see I'm going up to this middle bush pretty normal thing to do, standard, everyone goes here. I'm going to see if I can get some shots across. So I'm going to pack up in this bush, and I'm just going to sit here. I just want to see what I spot. Now, I'm just going to be patient, and patience is, is key sometimes with these tanks. Some people tend to get carried away with its speed, and, you know, they sit there for two seconds, there's no one spotted, and they decide to run around as crazy as they can, but sometimes taking the foot off the gas is actually better for these tanks. You can see I spotted the STI there in the back and I pop the adrenaline straight away because I want to just get shots in for free. And you can see there I'm trying to line up the third one and the object of 40 comes around the corner so I track him, damage him, spin him around and I'm just starting to farm damage on this guy now. So you can see just patience sitting in the bush shot after shot in and you can see the accuracy there, especially when the, f the first shot into the 140, and you can see the last shot there, very, very tight shots, but the accuracy on this tank allows it to pull those shots off. So after I know those guys probably aren't going to poke again, I, des I decided to reposition. Now I, I know there's a few guys over here, so I'm just having a look, see if I can get any free shots, but I'm not too worried, I'm not going to push out. Again, I want to be patient, there's no point me, you know, I could YOLO into the, the guy down at the bottom there, but I what's the point, you know, why I can just sit here and get free shots like this. So, you know, sometimes pushing, pushing is good, don't get me wrong, having aggression, I'm all about having aggression in this game and pushing, but sometimes it's just not, uh, not the right thing to do. And also, in these tanks, you don't have a huge hit point pool compared to, compared to heavy tanks. So you want to try and keep as much of your hit points for as long as possible. Because when it does come down to the very situa like sticky situations at the end, you want to be able to have the HP to deal with opponents. And that's something you with comes with experience, of course. But if you can, try and avoid taking hits. You see, I could take one, one from the uh, T-30 here. But that's the first shot I took in the entire game. And I think it's okay, because I'm pretty sure I know where all his team is. So I just need to push him, push him straight away. And you can see the mobility here, I go for the track shot, trying to get on his side. And you can see the side hug here, put another one in. And you can see the, it's very tricky for that T-30 to get the shot into me. So I do finish him off, and now I want to push for the tank over there, but I do see the E-100. So why not free farm again, just put shots, free shots into the back of him. He can't get the turret round for me, so I put one more in, and I continue on my way to finish off the other tank. Now you can see the mobility, it does get around the battlefield quite quickly. See the SDI there is aim in, let the gun aim, and bang, get the kill. So as you can imagine, this game is a pretty good game. You do get a few more shots in, but I just want to say, if this video has helped you in any way, or you think it's a good video, please drop a like and subscribe if you're new. Any support is appreciated, and uh, yeah, just a big thank you to everyone who subscribed. I said it in one of the last videos as well, but the channel is exploding, as I said. So yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for, uh, for subscribing. Uh, I probably will start a series 
where I do these how to uh, tanks on most tier 10s. Obviously I don't have every tier 10 and I will get to them all eventually. But yeah, if you have any suggestions of tier 10s, uh, do put it in the comments below. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it helped at all, make sure to drop a like. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next one.